It's maybe a little too late to accept his deal. That he has now. That's why he's like that. I think we can believe him, trust him, you know, and she knows it. She's so how much he cares about his kids and... you in fact betrayed by one of your kids oh, Galadriel run Galadriel run oh, you should have run you have no instincts, sister! <laughs> like... Also oh, betrayal. And also the similarity with what happened to... Oh, yeah. First time, you know? If only. A fight, Galadriel Sora? Ah, so you know. Oh, that's cruel! It's not symbolic 
go in the sink like that, it's about to get me more. Who just died? But she can see you also now. The door is still open. The door is shut. This fight needs to end and we know that it's gonna end with none of you being killed so... How is it gonna end? Ah! Big jump! That's what I said. One of you. Not a surprise, you know, we know that the men are gonna end by having them. They came! Late, but they came. To all of the hardcore fans who were so mad at the end of the previous episode, they didn't come, they should have come. They were meant to, to come, you know, but uh, they had other stuff to deal with also. I really no blood on you, my dear! Eek. Like that with the crown and no, no blood. as they thought, you know, that it could be writing it, I think. Accepting her ring, their rings, it's really symbolic. The light can. Her light. Ah, you're gonna wear it? I thought you would give it to her. Oh, it's even more symbolic. Don't be a Gondal, Gondal. It's their first migration. They have the foggiest swaths to bring. And Poppy is going with them more than the Sarah again. Why am I so sweet? You're going also now. We've walked the ways of this world, using snails and beetles to the summer out of days, but it's high time I walked my path. And you walked yours. 
not so different at all if you ask me. Not even with them. My understand, I understand it, so. I'm not gonna cry, it I'm gonna see each other again at some point. I'm gonna see each other again at some point, I'm gonna see each other again at some point. Your stuff! With that tree that the lady was talking about. Stuff with your name is related to these creatures. You find your way back to Pisa? It was all a test, wasn't it? <laughs> I was meant to choose friendship over power. I said it. I, was meant to help them. I predicted it that by helping your friends, you will find your staff, in fact. A wizard does not find his staff. And with it, your destiny. Like, really. Grand Elf? Yes, but you can't cut yourself Your from the rest of the world. Left us in a tangle. The lords of the Blue Mountains paid him vast tributes and they're demanding to collect. The rings? Rumors fly. But you were not your father's prepared heir. Some of the other dwarf lords are advancing claims. Your brother seems to be gathering support. Okay. That's what we're gonna deal with for the next season for you guys. Giving the rings to the other dwarves and your brother challenging you for the throne. Oh, the symbolic again for him to give her back the ring. We must decide whether to attack and bring the fight to him or to fall back to prepare our defenses. Sword of the shield. Hmm. Of course, would you advise the Monte Calathria? Old Galadriel would say to fight the sword. But this one? I would remember the council of our dear friend. Have a bit and remind our people. It's just not the strength to overcome the darkness. Let's go for the swap. into this episode. I see a lot of good moments, a lot of good ideas, but in comparison of the episode 7, which 
almost fully satisfied me and I was just like that about them in the fight when they saw Galadriel and also Sauron maybe being not enough charismatic for, in my opinion, you know, in comparison of Calibri in both intensity. Right there, I'm more divided about this episode, maybe because I expected it to be way more intense, you know, for the action moments. And in fact, it was not really about action moments, but about big decisions and about big things happening. And maybe I expected more also for the dwarves narrative arc, I thought that we would spend more time with them, like I think that I even said it, that after an episode, the last one being 80% you know, of the time Illigion and 20% with the dwarves, I wanted this one to be like at least 70% with the dwarves and 30% with the rest. And in fact, not at all. Like the situation with the dwarves was resolved in two scenes, three scenes? I wanted more like... For sure it was brilliant and looking so great during the king, during the prince, confronting each other after that discovering the, the mines, you know, the mutual and after that the balrog waking up taking during the king with him during the king giving the ring to his son and really saying uh, that's it uh, you're my heir, you're the true king, and going for the Balrog, like everything during this moment, the music, the, the intensity, how it looked like also on screen, it was truly perfect and so cool. But after that, we didn't see the dwarves during the entire episode, except for, at the end, them coming to help, uh, you know, the elves who stayed into a region. Something about Durin, mourning his dad and the challenges that he's gonna have during the next season his brother challenging him for the throne and also all of the other dwarves who are gonna want the rings and during he knows about the rings what they can do so you know he's gonna be conflicted about that so clearly it was a presentation of what is gonna happen for him during the next season so we did not spend enough time with them like oh i know they couldn't invent you know create scenes and create stories just like that and even more when for the other characters they needed time but i wanted more time and for example the time that we spent with Isildur talking with Theo, Isildur talking with his girl all of that, like, I'm not sure that it was necessary or at least not to be that long, these scenes. To be fully honest, these scenes were slowing the rhythm of the entire episode. I'm not sure that to put them right there during the episode, it was a good idea. I really had the impression that we had, you know, the middle of the episode being a little like that because of it. It was nice to have news about him, it was nice to have these conversations, but they could have been shorter. Oh, after that, uh, the fucking asshole coming, saying all of what happened to Numenor and pff, what he's gonna do with this place. At least, again, it's giving a purpose, you know, and it's teasing what is gonna happen to CEO, to all of this place for the next season. And it's explaining also why Isildur is living without the girl and like that, you know, with all of that in mind, knowing already what happened to his family. That's great. But yes, all of that could have been shorter. What is happening in Numenor? That scene, what is happening in Numenor? It was short scenes and they were enough to show the betrayal, to show, you know, how everything happened, why he escaped, you know, like all of that, it was short scenes. And why Miria, she stayed and what is gonna happen to her. It was really short scenes, but explaining enough, like, it was cool to not have more than that, because more than that, maybe it would have slowed down, you know, the rhythm of the episode. So yes, I think that the part with his Isildur was maybe a little too long. It was great to have it, but maybe too long. Galadriel, the fact that she did not escape right on time, the fact that it's happening like that, Maybe it was too quick and too easy, but at the same time, I love the fact that she's facing Ada with his true appearance. I love, in fact, the conversation with Ada and her. Maybe not all of the fans are gonna agree with me with that, but me, I saw it coming. 
and I thought that it was really well done and a good idea to make us see Ada really caring, you know, for his kids, really taking care of them, really being there, present for them and all. So right there, his decision to give her back her ring and the deal that they are making during that moment, everything feels logical and the fact that after that is being betrayed, it feels even more like a betrayal and we are feeling even more his pain and it's not just Sauron getting his revenge, it's also Ada getting betrayed and all of the hope that maybe we put into a potential deal with Galadriel being destroyed. So you know, his death is more impactful because of that. So me, I appreciated it. The fight between Sauron and Galadriel was nice and interesting because of him changing appearances, because of the fact that he truly thought that at some point she, she could have been the queen and all, because Yes, of all of the things that they said to each other, but it was again maybe a little too long. And also because it was so cut, like we had cut into it to show another scene of another place and then we came back to them and then in another place. And maybe because of that it felt too long also, maybe because of the way that it was edited, not only the time that it lasted on screen. But okay, it was nice. How she's surviving, it's more interesting, better, because of all of the symbolic with Elrond accepting to use the rings, accepting to wear the ring and to use it himself, you know, to feel its power. Then the fact that he's giving her back the ring, so accepting for her to have the ring and to use it. It's really, really symbolic, really cool, really interesting. That I loved it a lot. Alon I don't understand the fact that he survived because I truly thought that he was dead during the next episode. And again, like I explained after the last episode, for me, it would have been a good decision because I really have the impression that the writers, they don't know what to do with Alandir. During this entire season 2, Alandir didn't have a real purpose for himself, a real story, and he was just an helper for all of the characters. And to die right there during that battle and like that would have been heroic, would have been a good death, an honorable death, and would have been a good art to that character, which is not really useful anymore and like to keep him. If they are not finding for the season 3 something real to do with him, it's really gonna feel like, uh, you know, the character that we have and we don't know what to do with him and he's right there. So they need to find something for him for the next season now that they just do not kill him. Right there at the end, the four of them. It really, it looked like a painting. It looked so great on the screen and it gave me the chills. So that was cool. All of the things, you know, with Gandalf, Nori, Poppy, the Dark Wizard. That was really nice. And how is discovering his name, how is discovering his stuff. That's pretty cool and that end with Tom, it's amazing, like really they had me with that, the cheers, the tears, everything. Nori and Poppy living like that to help these guys, it feels logical and natural, but it's a little breaking my heart, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, now that Gandalf found his name, found his stuff, now he's gonna begin his real journey, you know, so they don't have place for this two anymore. I mean, you know, around him, around Gandalf. But I hope that during the season three, we're gonna continue to be with them, Nori and Poppy. And you know, I have really an up all of that story about finding that promised land and all. I have really that up that they're gonna be the two girls who are gonna found the Shire. So I would love to see that. So I would love to have them for that during the next seasons. Oh, and I didn't talk about Kelly Brimba. That was so cruel for Sauron to torture him like that, but not really a surprise coming from him. Kelly Brimba managed to manipulate Sauron for once and not the contrary, to make him kill him. So that was pretty great, pretty well done, Kelly Brimba. And during a wonderful speech, and again, the music during that moment was perfect. 
But really, how Sauron was during that discussion and even more after that discussion crying, I'm not sure of it. Like, all of that speech finishing about Sauron, Lord of the Rings, that it was pretty well done, pretty well written, and Sauron can be shocked, can be, you know, disturbed by that reveal, by that line. But crying, you know, it's giving too much humanity to his character, and you know that I'm against that. I'm okay to, for him to have a background, to have a story, to have feelings, you know, to, to, to have discussions with all of the characters about his goals, his purposes, his thoughts and all of that. But to give him deep feelings like sadness, like crying, no. It's not Sauron. Like Sauron is evil. Sauron with all of what he did, all of what he caused, you know, for for the pain and all, and all of what he wants to do, all of his purposes, all of everything, like Sauron, with time, lost his humanity, already lost his humanity, and to make him cry like that, for me, that it was really not okay. So yes, see, I'm divided for this final episode, the things that I didn't appreciate about it, it was Sauron crying, no, it was easier to scenes lasting too long. It was okay to have all of the scenes that we had, but maybe it was too long and because of that, the rhythm of the episode was a little weird. Not enough time with the dwarves. And that's it. That's the main things, you know, that were not that great about that final episode. But for the rest, I appreciated it. It worked on me, like uh, I had chills, you know. I had the emotions, they had me, like I had tears into my eyes for Gandalf and Tom singing like that. I appreciated a lot of things, like it worked on me. But not as much as I thought for a final episode. I thought that this final episode would excite me and would please me way more than what it did and even more after an episode 7 which was so epic. I expected that episode 8 to be as epic, you know, than the episode 7. Maybe it's because of that, you know. Because of that episode 8 being like that, I have the impression that the rhythm of the season is not functioning also. It's really going like that, you know. And it's not that great, I think. But no matter what, it worked on me. I, I, I loved it. Not everything, but still. Tell me, tell me, what did you think about that final episode? If you share my opinion about it, about the things which functioned, about the things which didn't function, tell me. I'm interested by your opinion about it. Okay, so it's the end of this season two. Remember that if you want on my Patreon, you have the longer reaction part with the level two and the full reaction part with the level three and all of that for this entire season two. And I will see you maybe for the season three now. If you can be interested, I'm reacting to plenty of other shows and animes and movies and all on my YouTube channel, Patreon, everywhere. I made a playlist for each one of them on YouTube, so check my YouTube channel. Maybe we are already watching the same shows and you could be interested to stay with me for them. Okay, it's all for you and for me for now for this season 2 of The Rings of Power. So it's all for me for now. So bye for now. Bye. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Rain. <laughs>